Welcome to the third episode of Rock Coder's Clone Tutorial. In the past, we've already looked at what clones are, how clones are made, the limit of clones, and a few things you can do with clones. In this episode, we can look at what broadcasts do with clones. So we'll start off with a simple little project. When the green flag is pressed, all we'll do is we'll move the sprite to make sure he's in the center of the screen, and we'll give him a name for this sprite only. We'll set his name to Scratch Cat. And we're going to have an event. When the space key is pressed, we're going to broadcast to display his name. So simply broadcast. What's my name? And when I receive what's my name, I'll show his name for two seconds. So say name for two seconds. So as you'd expect, the green flag will move into the center, set a variable, I press a space bar, call this code and say hello, let's try it. Press space bar. <laughs> there we go. Press spacebar, scratch cat for two seconds. That's great. Now what if I create a clone? My clone will be in exactly the same place, so of course I will, when I start the clone, I'll move him somewhere slightly different. I'll go to 100 minus 100. So now I have a sprite here and a clone here. Press spacebar. Two interesting things. The sprite, the clone, has copied the for this sprite only variable name, which we would expect. But what you might not expect is, is that when you send a broadcast, it doesn't only go to the main sprite, it will go to all clones as well. So every sprite and every clone will receive the broadcast. So press space and they're both receiving that broadcast. So what if when I start as a clone, I change his name? So we'll set his name to Twin Cat, the twin of Scratch Cat. Now if I run the code, there's a sprite, there's a clone. Hit the space bar, and I've got Scratch Cat and Twin Cat. See, they've got their own copies of that variable. When the clone was made, he took the copy from the sprite he was made from, but then any changes made to it are his own. I'll further demonstrate that by using a for all sprites name variable, which is for all sprites. Now, if instead of name I use the for all sprites name, you'll be able to see the difference that this makes. If I now, don't need to see it on the screen, if I now run the code, again, the main sprite and the clone, press spacebar, and they're both twin cat. The reason is because when it's a for all sprites variable, there's only one copy in the entire project of that variable. So here, the main sprite changes it to scratch cat. When the clone is created, he changes it to twin cat and because it's a for all sprites there's only one copy so it becomes twin cat for anybody who uses that variable so that demonstrates how broadcasts will go to every clone as well as every variable and it also clarifies why it's important to note the difference between for all sprites and for this sprite only variable let's add another event We'll say when C is pressed, we're going to make another broadcast. And this broadcast is going to be called create clone. And uh, instead of creating a clone when the green flag is pressed, I'm going to create a clone whenever 
it receives the Create a Clone broadcast. So now, if I press C, there's the master. Press C, he's got a clone. If I press space, <laughs> still using for all sprites name. Let's change that back to just name. So it's for this sprite only variable. So there's Scratch Cat, create a clone. And we have Scratch Cat, a twin cat. Instead of going to 100 minus 100, we're going to make him go to a random place. So similar thing, press C for a clone, there he is, and we have Scratch Cat, Twin Cat. But what happens if we press C again, create a clone? Will we get another clone? Yes, but we get two more. And that's because, as I explained, the broadcast will be received by the sprite and all of the clones. So it started from the beginning. If I press C now, it's broadcast, the master sprite will receive it and create a clone. But if I press C now, the master sprite and the clone will both receive the broadcast and both of them will create another clone, even with four, if I do it again, eight, and so on. Quite often people find in their projects that clones are creating way too many, that unexpected things are happening, and this is generally why people are forgetting that the clones, all the clones, will also receive the broadcasts. If you want to make it specific that only one of the clone acts upon the broadcast, you could create a variable which I will usually call clone question mark for this sprite only. As we've already said, when you press the green flag, all clones are deleted. So the only remaining one is not a clone. So we can definitely say he is not a clone. When I start as a clone, we can definitely say he is a clone, which at the moment will make no difference. But if I put a check in here, for clone equals false. Then we should see a difference. If I run the code now, or press C to create a clone, there he is. Press C to create another clone, clone, I just get one. And again, one more, and again, one more. Because this time, although all the clones and the master are receiving the broadcast is checking for the one that isn't a clone which is just the original one sprite and only creating a clone then so it's only running once even though the broadcast has been received by them all and i think that pretty much covers all the basics of cloning um, and in particular in this lesson why it's important to realise that when you make a broadcast, the broadcast is received by every sprite and every clone.